I just crossed $500,000 in online sales in my business, and instead of tooting my own horn and telling you about all the things I did right, I thought I would make this video to tell you all of the stupidest mistakes that I made along the way that made this take a lot longer than it probably should have. So you might want to watch this video if you'd like to make your first half million in sales a lot faster and without feeling like a complete idiot along the way. Stupid mistake number one, trying to teach people to do stuff that I haven't done myself. Look, it's very, very difficult to get somebody to believe you, to trust you, to teach them to do something if you haven't done it yourself. Now, I got started with a mentor that I paid a lot of money to teach me how to get into the online business game. And his thing was teaching other people how to get rich. And so what he had me do was essentially do the same thing as him, teach other people how to get rich. The only problem was, I wasn't rich, right? I had come from a middle class background, I had a middle class salary, and so me trying to teach people all the principles of getting rich just didn't really ring true because I hadn't done it yet. Now, I did have the confidence that I would succeed eventually, and that confidence is absolutely crucial, right? You have to have that faith in yourself or else you're just gonna give up, right? You're gonna lose steam, you're gonna lose motivation, but I hadn't done it yet, and so to get any credibility with other people, well, that's kind of difficult, and I felt like kind of imposter doing it at the same time, even though I was doing what this guru is telling me to do, who was legitimately rich, so, you know, he had some credibility, but I still felt like an imposter trying to tell other people how to do it. Now, the flip side to that is that you don't have to be perfect, right? And a lot of people get stuck in this. They think, okay, well, yeah, I've done this thing, I've accomplished this thing, but I'm not at the level of some people, right? I'm not the top of the game, but that isn't so important. What's important is that you're at least a step or two above the people that you are coaching, the people that are your audience, right? So you might not be the strongest guy in the gym, for example, but chances are, if you've been working out for a while, you know some stuff that some people don't and you have better results than some people do. And one of my businesses that succeeded very well was teaching people how to be data analysts. Now, was I the greatest data analyst in the world? No, not even close. But for people who would like to get into a career as a data analyst, well, I had done that successfully. I had gotten myself into a career as a data analyst, so I was qualified to teach that even though I was not the best in the world, even though I was not perfect. So that was the first stupid mistake. Second stupid mistake was trusting the gurus more than my own intuition. And this is going to be a little bit controversial because it makes sense that you should follow the system that has already worked before. And to some extent, you do have to follow the system that's already worked before. But there's also that inner voice that tells you what is your unique gift, what is authentic to you that people are going to resonate with, whereas if you're just trying to copy somebody else, it might come off as inauthentic and it works for them because they created it, because it's authentic for them. But if you try to do it, it might not work as well for you. Now, that said, I mean, you can kind of use that as a starting point, as a jumping off point, what the gurus are telling you to do. But eventually, you kind of have to develop your own voice if you really want to get anywhere. A really painful example of this is that I had a lot of success selling mid-ticket, right? I was selling, you know, between $1,000 and $2,000. And all the gurus were saying, oh, you need to sell high ticket. You need to sell high ticket. And right, the, the mid-ticket model was that you do a webinar and you, at the end of the live webinar, and the end of your live webinar, you actually pitch the product, right? Whereas the high ticket model is you have some sort of training, some sort of webinar similarly, but at the end of the webinar, instead of pitching the product directly, you pitch to book a phone call with you or a member of your team, and then you sell them over the phone. And so I had a lot of success with the mid-ticket, with the selling directly off of the live webinar, and then I switched to the high ticket because that's what the gurus said that I should do. And I struggled with that for like a year and a half, and I never had the same level of results that I did with the live webinar, even though I kept going and going and going and trying to figure it out. And I think what it turned out to be was just that for my product and my offer and my audience, that that uh, webinar model just made more sense, right? Whereas the high ticket model, it works for some products, it works for some industries, and specifically the industries that the gurus are in, right? And like I keep saying gurus, I mean people that teach business owners how to be better business owners or how to teach people to become business owners, right? It works better for their industry. And so they try to blanket that over every industry. And, and that didn't work for me. I really should have trusted my gut 
gone with what worked instead of just trusting what the gurus were saying. Which brings me to stupid mistake number three, and that is to figure out what works and then stop doing it. Which is exactly what I did in this situation. If I just kept with that mid-ticket webinar model and scaled it up, I would be a heck of a lot richer than I am now and I would have hit that half a million dollar mark a lot sooner than I did. And I think this is also related to something called the upper limit problem, according to a book called The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, which I highly recommend, which is basically a fear of success. That our, our The idea is that our brains are wired to keep us comfortable. In order to keep us comfortable, it keeps us within the zone of the familiar. And then when we achieve a much higher level of success. Like for me, I went from never making more than like $7,000 in a month to all of a sudden I made $30,000 in a month, uh, like right away. That was a huge leap. And so I kind of freaked out. Like my, my subconscious brain was saying, okay, something's wrong here. Something's wrong here, right? Like this, this is too good to be true. This can't last. And so I sabotaged myself. And this is something that happens to a lot of people because it's kind of baked into our evolution, right? When you, you know, the people say more money, more problems. Um, when you get to a higher level, you have higher level problems. You encounter new problems that you never encountered before. Right now, you have to deal with different tax situation. You have to deal with uh, people asking for refunds. You have to deal with chargebacks and, and how that uh, affects your company. And there's like all this stuff that you have to deal with that you didn't have to deal with before. You have to deal with being more busy, fulfilling for a lot of people and keeping them satisfied. And so all of that is unfamiliar territory to you and that part of your brain just the alarm bells ring and say, danger, 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 get out, get back to the situation you were in before. And so you got to recognize that and you got to cut it off and say, okay, I know this is uncomfortable, but I'm going to keep going full steam ahead anyway. I realize this is just my brain trying to protect me, but I found something that's working and I'm going to keep doing it. Okay, stupid mistake number four, try to advertise to everybody. This is a big beginner mistake that a lot of people make. They want to advertise to absolutely everybody because they think everybody should buy their product and it comes from this kind of lack mentality that they don't want to niche down because that cuts off a possible part of their market and they don't want to cut off any possible sales right in the the old adage that if you try to sell to everybody you sell to nobody uh, that applies here now when I started this I remember the first ads I ever ran I ran on um, I believe it was Facebook and I targeted the entire world and I started getting leads for like 50 cents or a dollar which you know if you know anything about online marketing marketing, that's super, super cheap. And so I was so happy with myself. I was so proud of myself. And I, I was even like bragging about it to my followers on the internet. Um, and eventually it, it realized that I was, all of my advertising budget was going to Bangladesh. And so I was getting these dirt cheap leads from people in Bangladesh who barely spoke English, who didn't understand what I was doing, who sent me like weird questions on email suggesting that they didn't understand a word of what I had said and that had no ability to ever pay me. And so I had this email list full of people from Bangladesh that were completely useless to me. So don't try to advertise to everybody. Don't be afraid to niche down, especially in the beginning, right? Now there's a, a time when you get so big within your niche, then you can expand your niche, right? Like a, a lot of people like to follow Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins is like everything about self-improvement Tony Robbins does, where whether it's business or it's health or it's relationships, like he does everything. But the point is he didn't start that way, right? He made his, his name with teaching people to stop smoking, I believe. And then he gradually, once he got really big in that space, he gradually expanded it to other things. And now after years and years of doing this, now he has this big, broad range. Now that he has a ton of name recognition, people trust him, but you probably don't don't want to do that at the beginning. Now, stupid mistake number five is to try to focus on a whole bunch of stuff at one time. This is another big rookie mistake I see a lot of people making. They want multiple streams of income, right? That's the thing. And so they're trying to build out these multiple streams of income all at the same time before they even have one stream of income that's working, right? And so they're splitting their focus among 10 different things. And, you know, whereas any one of those things is fairly difficult, right? It takes some time. It takes some energy to figure out and they're never going to get any of them if they don't focus on one. 
I made this mistake when I started. I was trying to focus on creating a product and then I was running ads and then I was doing a YouTube and I was doing a podcast. And I was doing a blog. Um, I was doing a Facebook. It's like I had so many things that I was spreading my attention over that I wasn't able to give very much focus to any one part of that. And so all of them sucked pretty much. Now, eventually I kind of figured out which ones I liked best which is okay. I mean, if you want to try that at the beginning, knowing that you're going to cut out 90% of it eventually, but don't try to focus on, you know, omnipresence. This is a thing that the gurus tell you to do. You have to be omnipresent. You have to be on all channels. Okay, that's great if, you know, you've been in the game for a while, if you've mastered one channel and now you have a team that can help you with the other channels. But if you're trying to do this all by yourself before you have like any sales at all, that's just a recipe for, for failure. So I hope you're smarter than me. I hope you don't make any of these mistakes. And if you'd like to see what I did right, what I actually did to get to half a million dollars, check out this video right here.